Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy. So we're going to be able to answer a series of webinars uh, uh, five days a week, sometimes six days a week during the uh, period of lockdown. Um, the great part about this, you know, we've always got to look for something positive in this, is that I can find people because they're at home. So today we have Sharon Wilsey and Laura Wilsey back for the number three. This time they are home and hopefully they can play the video that we were supposed to last yes. time they were in their car. Um, and uh, today is a Star Wars theme. <laughs> um, I'm having a great time with my virtual backgrounds. So um, if you want to make a comment, please put it in the chat. I try to keep track of the chat better than the Q&A, um, but I'll do my best to make sure we get your questions answered. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to Sharon. Hi, Sharon and Laura. <laughs> hey, Wendy. It's, it's great to be back. This has been really fun. When I, um, last night, Laura was like, oh, we're going to talk to Wendy tomorrow. And I was like, yes. <laughs> it's been really fun to just share this time with you and with the people out there. And so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sharon Wilsey. I wrote some books back there. And uh, the, the primary book is called Horse Speak, the Equine Human Translation Guide. And it's based on a uh, in-depth process of decoding equine bio to, to minutia, to very precise, exact and specific nuances. So it, it's not the sort of broad stroke. Um, everybody knows horses have body language, but this was uh, cultivated from years that I spent in a college setting where I was teaching students with learning disabilities, equine assisted learning with the guise of helping them develop better. Uh, a lot of these uh, students had nonverbal learning disabilities. And so in, in the effort of helping them develop better nonverbal language so they could have relationships and um, get along with their peers and all that sort of stuff, uh, we, we learned how to speak horse and then we translated that back onto human and that worked really, really well. So uh, after years of doing that, people kept saying to me, you gotta write this down, you gotta write this down, so I did. And uh, now it's all over the world and we met Wendy originally in Germany at Equitana and it was a hoot from the moment we were like across the, they must have said the here. <laughs> we were from each other. And we just got an instant, instant like, we're, you know, like just rubbing elbows. So she says, I do this thing surefoot. You got to come say what the horses are saying. And I didn't know any, I don't even know, Wendy, okay. And I'm just running down the aisle. <laughs> And she starts throwing down these pads and well, the horses are saying a lot because the pads are pretty amazing. And so since then, we've just been, you know, hanging out together whenever we can. So we've had a few slumber parties. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's been really fun, really good stuff. And, and of course, we both nerd out together. So we get like, oh, the you know, so we get really, you know, really into this stuff. Um, so we did do some filming with our two, two of our horses. We filmed every, all of them, but two that kind of came out the best. One is Rocky, and when you see his film, he does have patches of fur missing because he had colic surgery earlier this year. And it's still winter here. We just had a snowstorm last night. Oh, no. Here in Vermont. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the snow. snow's gone. And it's gorgeous today. But yeah, yeah, but it was sleeting. It's, yeah, it's yeah. gross. So... We haven't shaved him down all the way because that would be cruel. And so he just got missing patch. So don't worry about that. But he's doing great. Yeah. So he had been on sure oh, patch. And I'm just gonna before. tell you this, just so you know. We're we're gonna do a little bit of this on Facebook Live. So okay. on my on my Murdoch method page. So I've just set that out there. We won't do the whole hour, but I just wanted people to know, you know, like people on my page maybe have not met you before. So that's why I put it up on Murdoch Method. By the way, this is Sharon Wilsey hey. and Laura Wilsey, and we're gonna talk about horse speak and surefoot pet. Okay, roll it. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, okay. So, um, yes, yeah, so we have Rocky, he's gonna, he's been on pads before once. And then <clears throat> we have Dakota after that, and she's never been on pads. So that was just kind of a neat contrast. And so I want to introduce Laura. And I'm Laura Wilsey, and I met Sharon about 11 years ago, and I do have Alice from the palace with us as well, and uh, she's become our new lap kitty in the office. So yeah, I met Sharon 11 years ago at a rescue. I had adopted a PMU foal with basically no horse experience, and I was like, wow, this is, uh, she was about a year old when I met Sharon, and things were great until um, they weren't, and I, when I met her, you know, she changed my whole horsemanship world, and I've been attached to her hip ever since, and I've been in the hospitality industry for over 25 years, and 
I was like, let's just do this mission together and bring Horsebeak to the world. And here we are. It's been uh, super exciting. And uh, yeah, we've got books in Japan, which is unbelievable, and uh, the Netherlands, and going to be out in French and Polish and Italian Germany. and Germany and Netherlands. So it's like, Making it's the world been by really, storm. <laughs> yeah. And so we're so excited to be working with Heidi. I mean, excuse me, Wendy. <laughs> I, Wendy why Heidi. Is it why is that name? I know. It's why like, does that name do are that? Are supposed to be Heidi? Was that <laughs> going to be your <laughs> name back, you know, your parents? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I know of. All right, cool. So, yeah, we, if you would like, we can show that video. Yeah, let's do Rocky it. All right, just give me a second. Share my screen here. So we'll we gotta rewind it. Okay. Make it big. Let me know how the quality is. Uh, how is that, Wendy? It, it still looks good? great. And I'm just gonna reduce our little pictures over here because we want to see the horse's face. Okay. 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 Good. Okay, it's big. breaking up a little bit is on the video quality. All right. Describe what you did um, because right now the video quality is breaking up. Video is breaking up? Yeah, well, it's going just, like still pictures. Like you put the pads down, you picked up a pad, you went over to the horse, and now he's got his foot next to the pad. Oh, and now you put it underneath the left front. Okay, so we stopped it for a second and we're going to start it again. So how's it flowing now? Let's see. I don't know why my internet. The, it's the internet sometimes. And what I can do afterward, if you guys send me the video, is I can actually splice it into the um, webinar so that it plays properly. Yep, he's on two feet now. He's on both front feet with hard pads. Yep. 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 So tell us so what's what going on. Of, here, here, here. <laughs> what, what's, what he looks at Laura. <laughs> he looks at the camera. You're going to help? <laughs> <laughs> he has his back legs kind of splay leg because he's really exploring the front. So when he drops his nose there, that's a reset. You and I have seen that before. And he wiggled his lip a little bit. And so from those couple of messages, this is good. This is releasing that he licks my And you know, Wendy, because you've done this so much, you can. Yeah, so your he, audio he is just... breaking up a little bit, Sharon. So just kind of repeat yourself a little. <laughs> So he was looking for he was the set of pads. He he put his head down, he put his head up, he licked my knuckle. And so he was like, Yeah, yeah, bring bring it on, let's do some more. So is this playing okay? Yeah, so now you're putting pads underneath his back feet, you're using the firm slants. Right. So so I think what we might need to do, Sharon, is have you pause the video for a second and talk about this a little bit. Sure. The audio is getting broken up. Sure, sure. All right, how's that? We'll just stop the share for a yeah, second. Yeah, stop the okay. share for a second. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, if you guys talk about some of that, and then later I can, if you send me the video, I can splice it in so it, it sure. plays a little better. So just tell us what oh, was sure. going on. We now. can do that. Do you want to, can you bring up this to still shot? Uh, not right okay. now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I didn't I'll just bring up because I have a video. Show your screen, but don't play the video. Yeah, put it on the screen, okay. but don't. Yeah, because play. that way I, I can. Just... I'll know where to slice it in. Right. All it's right. the ways of you know everybody's home, but not everybody has the the fastest internet. I happen to be super fortunate that I have a really high speed internet here where I live. It's why I live where I live. Um, but uh, yeah. sometimes it's not so easy. Okay, so now he's standing on four pads. So tell us right. about this. And well, he, I put a pad in each direction of the slants on the back because I wanted him to, um, and he wanted, did he want an upward slant or a downward slant? He's very good at exploring things and then telling. So both of his feet down and felt and then he it up onto the toe of the inverted slant, sort of the backward slant. So then I knew that bent for him, he said, I want it, I want this the other way. So I, I went ahead and came in and, and switched it. <laughs> right, now pause right, it there. there. Good. So once he gets in, once he gets the other slant, the the way he wanted it, he really thinks and come back to the, is what happens next. And because he looked at me. So what was interesting about him is he was very clear 
about not only what he wanted in the pods, where he wanted to be sending. It was comfortable with my chest towards his nose so he could sort of focus in on me and not like on the environment so that he could relax. Whereas other horses kind of want you to stand up more this one direction or another. I've noticed because of where you're standing is the butt you're in the body language. He didn't want, he's a mentor type, he's a stoic type. And so for him, he needed to know that I've got his world. He could go there. And he only stood on the pads for another minute. <clears throat> and then he, he just dropped his nose, he did a reset and he walked off and that was, he was done. Whereas the, the next horse, Dakota, she stands on them for quite a long time. And we act double pads for her. So she's got her two hind legs on both sets of pads. All right, so so stop your stop your screen share for a second here, and let's just see if and just recap that again because again, like I've said, your audio is breaking up a little bit today. Okay, and yeah, that's weird because we we're have in it. a hard line too. Like yeah, we have it, we have it plugged in so that we're not even dealing with Wi-Fi, but maybe yeah. Wi-Fi would be better. That's okay. Maybe we'll, the Wi-Fi we'll, is better. We can make it work. So just describe All again. Right. What you did with Rocky, we saw what you had him started with hard pads, went to firm slants behind, and kind of a little bit about what happened. Uh, so he, as soon as he sniffed the pads, his basically he was all in. And it's very interesting, Wendy. Can you hear me okay? Am I breaking yep. up? Good. Okay, good. So it's very interesting when you let them sniff the pad, how even just contact with the muzzle seems to do something. Haven't you noticed that? Yeah, and that's the first thing I do is it, not all of them touch it. Some of them just turn away and, and act like it's not there. But there's a lot, you know, a huge, probably 50, 60% that actually touch it. Yeah. And from, from my work, what I know is that they have, uh, they have an incredible sensitivity through the muzzle, and that's where they greet each other and the world um, and how they make connections. So it's interesting when, when they touch that there. We talked about this last week. The... There's an acupuncture point there called GV26, and, and that's a reset. So when they wiggle, when they really strongly like rub their lip on something, they're trying to reset uh, their nervous system and, and sort of drop it down to parasympathetic. So this horse- We haven't, they're not seeing- Oh, we're not seeing. So the next horse is, she loves the pads so much, she kept trying to eat them. Yeah, so we just commented, <laughs> okay. actually, I saw that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stop the live stream now, and, and just because I'm not sure if that's actually part of the problem that I'm trying to do. Yeah, okay. that might so, be, because you're, yeah. So I turned it off. Um, somebody said, what, what do they bite the pads and don't really stop? They, don't let them bite the pads, because yeah. the pads are not warranted against bites. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and yes, somebody we had to keep correct. Yeah, tend to want to put their mouths on things. So, you know, if you see them about to use their teeth, you might want to take it away. All right, let's yeah. go to the next horse, Sharon. All yeah, right. let's see. Um, since I think that the live feed discontinuing that might have helped the internet a little bit. So we'll just try the video for a second to see okay. if it works. So, so she, this is toward she, the end. This is towards the end. So she's already, she's got that one. It's like an extra firm pad in the front, but it's really long. It's the physio pad. So just grab your, your slider on that video and pull it back a little bit. And I think it'll start to play better like when you replay it. Yep. Okay. Just go back to the beginning of her. All right, go all the way back. Yeah, sometimes it, the video takes a little while to catch up, kind of. All right, all right that's, that's Rocky, there we are. Yeah so, yeah, so here, now can you see her? Do you see yep. Dakota? And her eyes are already closed. Yes, one pad. And that's the first time she's been on a pad? Yeah, she's yeah. never been on a pad. But she's a very conscious horse. She's a very, see there, she wanted to nibble it. She said, oh, that's fantastic. That's a great, this is so good on my feet. I bet it tastes great too. <laughs> have you used these pads with other horses? I have not used these, no, I've used them with just mine. Okay. So all of my horses have used them. But I mean, have, have other horses been on the pads before this horse? These, these, yeah, these are the ones Rocky had been on. Okay. And these are from our uh, manager, Deb, had these pads. These were before we got your gift of pads in the yeah. mail. Yeah, right. And the reason I asked that question is that somebody's asking, do the pads have glue or adhesive? Yes, they do. Could they be smelling something or 
previous horses. And what you need to realize is that in the center sulcus of the horse's frog is actually a scent gland. And so um, the horses, a lot of times when they're sniffing a pad, they may be smelling a scent that was left over by another horse. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, so this is wonderful because I am enjoying, like there's, there was a lot of change in her facial expression right there. Her jaw shifted. She's exploring. She's not just bobbing her head for no reason. Like, see, there's a little sway side to side, but it's, it's front to back and side to side. So there, when they, that's called a scan the horizon. She's looking up and looking around. And that's a signal that says, I'm checking for danger before I let go more. Especially on that left side, because that's, she has, she's that's blind her blind, that her other eye is Whoa. totally blind. This is your blind horse. This is my yeah. blind horse. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so, so somebody's asked a question that this is my first time watching and I don't know what the pads are about. So um, eight years ago, I discovered that if you put a horse on an unstable surface, they change their balance behavior and movement. And we don't understand how it works, but we know it does. I have people all around the world using surefoot pads, improving horses balance. Make, like last night, I did a whole webinar with Ida Hammer talking about how it helps horses when they're being shod and trimmed. Um, I've had veterinarians on the webinar, so please go to the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel and you can watch lots of videos on what is Surefoot, how to use it, and why you'd want to use it. But in this case today, we're talking with Sharon because she's able to interpret the horse's actions with horse speak so that we get a deeper understanding of what's going on when they're on pads. Yes. So what's interesting is that she's really and she's moving it like that she's she asked for it in the back did you see that with her yeah. leg? so because she's totally blind on her left side she's right side dominant now and she uses her body not in a balanced way so she wanted you know all the right side then all the left side and then just the fronts and then just the backs and then so it's very interesting how she's using the pads and when she's indicating to us i'm ready for the next thing she's she's giving us a direct look I don't know if you saw that, but her whole body just jolted. So I, whether that, you know, I didn't. Can you just take that back yeah. a little bit? We'll see if we can see that. Yeah. Go back to where her whole body. A little bit further. And what I find so fascinating is she's blind in her left eye, but how much she's closing her right eye. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which means she's totally releasing into the environment and feeling secure. But you'll see in a second there. See her stomach. See the stomach take going really, really deep. There and there's a jolt. No, it, it breaks up too much. But again, oh. you know, I'll have you guys send me the footage. And then yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. then you can just play this. Um, you yep. can have this on your on Facebook. Right there's another one. So her the nerves going through, like you know, with the vagus nerve ends up in the in the gut and in the hind gut. So basically, her her whole her hind gut and her stifle area just contracted very deeply and then released. And then she said, "I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over there." And she thought she was leaving. But when she got off the front pads and just her hind pads were on it, Alice. <laughs> she realized this is great. So she she, she was like, to hang here. out there. Yeah, I'm just gonna hang out here. And I gotta tell you, after this session, she started doing flying lead changes and extended trots all by herself out in the field. This enormous movement. So she's a very athletic horse anyway. But she's been moving very stinted and carefully for because of the blindness. And the good eye is not that good, right? Right. So here where she's looking back and forth and back and forth, and then she takes it, see this, the tentative steps away? She doesn't there's move. A lot she's got her back feet on. Yeah, yeah. And then so, she'll... So somebody's asked a question of, of what did you mean by a jolt? So um, have you ever... Has, has anybody ever had a moment where you, you scratch an itch here and you feel it here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, or the, the, the saying, someone walked over your grave, where for no reason you just go, bleh, bleh, you're like, here. <laughs> like I just did now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, you know, there's, there's all these nerve and they're wired and they're connected in different parts. So when our, from my understanding, Wendy can speak to this better, from my understanding, when we're um, renegotiate like if you've had nerve damage if you've had a, a break here or there when your body is renegotiating itself it's like messages that haven't been getting through start to get through and that first message 
could be like a jolt of electricity. Like a good chiropractic adjustment. Yeah, sometimes it's like, <laughs> whoa. And so when the horse is standing on these pads, you can look for these like ripple effects. There's like tremors and jolting and, and little muscle, you know, little spasms here and there and movements. So I'm like going to pose a question answer. that I don't know that any of us can answer, but you know, the more I learn about vagus nerve and the, the need to move after something happens, you know, I, I almost wonder if there isn't some correlation between those kind of little twitchy things and vagus shaking it off. You know, cats and dogs shake stuff off and right. people could <laughs> if we mm -hmm. let, the, our, let ourselves. And so I'm just wondering if that isn't sort of an equivalent of shaking it off like, like a dog or a cat. I have no way of knowing, but. Right. I, th I think it's a little bit of everything. I think uh, on an emotional level that, because emotions are energies in motion, right? So there, there's the, the impact of environment, of, of social connections, of, you know, having them or not having them or, or all that kind of stuff. And that can get stuck in the body, like what you're saying as well, but also just injuries. Yeah. Right. So just like she's blind. And so she's started to walk and move around so that her good eye is kind of looking. <laughs> right. She's becoming you know? so dominant on her good eye that she's altered her whole body to accommodate. Exactly. It. So, so how long was the session roughly? Uh, 15 minutes total. 15 yeah. minutes total. Rocky was probably three. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's so variable. And so after you put her back in the field, that's when she went and did her flying changes and yeah. Yeah, wow. she 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 took a nap, which is oh, okay. good, a good sign. I think that's a good sign because yep, so they're renegotiating. They're, the whole system is shutting down, coming back on, and yeah, for dinner that night, she's flying lead changes and run. I mean, she's pretty athletic anyway, but she's been. You can see the change. I was staring at her, going, "Do you have the phone? Where's the camera?" <laughs> <laughs> Never when you need it. <laughs> Never, <laughs> because it was stunning, and her her whole affect was like, look at me, I'm back. That's so cool. Yeah, it was totally cool. Yep, so I had a reigning horse and um, I uh, had her for a number of years and then sold her to a woman had her for, had her for the rest of her life. And when I first started doing Surefoot, I went over to play with the pads with her, with Blondie. And after I did the pads, she wanted to run and stop and spin and do all her reigning moves. It was like, you know, somebody flipped a switch and suddenly she was like a three-year-old again. It was so amazing. Yeah, I, I see a question here. What do the little nose twitches mean? I haven't seen that. I see that when my horse is on pads and not at any other times. Um, no, the, 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 the nostrils and the muzzle, and the, especially the spot between the nostrils, for us it's right here, right? Because our mouth is shaped differently. Um, they use their lips and their nostrils almost expressively as we do. So if you, if you see a horse, uh, still shots of horse mouth expressions and human mouth expressions next to each other. It makes more sense. And I mean, you know, they do all kinds of, they do all kinds of crazy stuff like we do with our lips and it's all a similar meaning. It's a similar expression. Um, they don't have the, the emotional range that we do because we also add, you know, prefrontal cortex to that. And so then we have internalized feelings and externalized and all we have, way more complicated but on a primal level on a simple just impact level there's some just there's some extreme similarities so if a horse is moving their lips and wiggling their lips around they're basically um demonstrating that they're releasing old tension so it's it's really crucial for them well and this area is related to the limbic system of the brain yeah. so yeah. um linda tellington jones has talked about that forever of working here to affect the emotions and Dr. Peters, one of the things you said earlier made me think of one of the lectures with Dr. Peters is that that um, resting stage where you go deeper, you're getting serotonin. He talks yeah. about serotonin and serotonin is the neurochemical that is the feel good neurochemical and also um, builds dendritic scaffolding. So dendrites are your interconnections between your nerves and the more rich dendritic connections, the, the more you can make idea, connect ideas. Right, and right, so totally. During that deeper time when I think that what they appear to be sleeping, but really are, they're processing just like, yes. like we do. Yep. And also the eye blinking. Eye blinking is really important for horses. It is for us as well. So when we're 
uh, shocked or really paying attention to something, our eyes will get like this. We go into staring mode. So if something's coming at you, what, it could be good or it could be bad, but if it's coming at you, 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 you trigger into this and so do they. But because they're a prey animal, they have more emphasis on being triggered than we do. Yeah. We can go there really easy, but we, we also thrive on stress and all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah. And they don't. They don't thrive on stress at all. They thrive on being able to actually drop all the way down into that parasympathetic realm where they can rest and repair and digest. So when you see them starting to blink, you'll often see first they raise their head and they do what's called a sentry. So they look around a little bit. It's like clear... Is it safe for me to let go? And so when you see this kind of, even in a horse that you're working with, so you're doing work with the horse and, and they're, they're trying something new with you and suddenly they kind of, and they look away like this, they're not tuning you out. It's actually the opposite. They're saying, I'm getting ready to do this thing with you in a deeper way, but I got to check first and make sure it's safe to do that. And you'll see them do that before they lay down. They'll kind of scan the horizon, to a century, everything. I think it's cool. I'm going to lay down. So if we do that for them, which is partly when Rocky and Dakota are looking around, you'll see in the background, there's us and we just look too. So we're saying, yeah, I'm in it. I'm in it with you. Let me look. Things look safe. Okay. I think you can. And it's a real simple gesture, but it matters to them because it says to them, I got you. You can lie down. And you'll see other horses. When the more dominant horse in a herd is ready to lie down, a lot of times the other horses get closer. So they're like, okay, we've got you. Fred's going to lie down. Everybody, get in position, you know, because we got to watch out because Fred's our boss. And if Fred's down, we all got to pay attention to what's going on. So, <laughs> so funny. It's like takes three to make one. You yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so just by doing that behavior with them, when, they, when I notice them looking around, I'm saying to myself, oh, good. They're getting ready to go deeper. So ironically, if we give space to that moment, um, they will take an advantage of saying, yeah, let me go all the way down. And that's why you notice right away that her, her one good eye, she's like, I know you've got my back, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to go all the way down, which was great. Yeah, and it took her, what, a nanosecond to figure nanosecond. out the pads were a good deal? Yeah. yeah. Um, so somebody's asked, do the pads create instability so smaller, less used muscles fire? Um, is it like Pilates? So yes and no. Um, yes, that you get uh, intrinsic muscles, but you're affecting proprioception and uh, so much more than just exercise. Um, the, the neurochemical change that we see in terms of going from fight and flight to parasympathetic and then in, into an even deeper level is something that we can't thoroughly explain yet, but that change in the neurochemical uh, makeup will last for a very long time. In fact, in some cases it's permanent, so yes, you're, you're, you can use Sherwood pads on a multiple of levels. And if you watch Dr. Sherry Johnson's webinar that we had last Friday, she's coming from a rehab perspective. And I think you'll really enjoy that webinar. Yeah. Somebody did ask if I could make the nurturing sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. That was a question that got, um, that got emailed, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. So, so horses use a lot of nonverbal cues for their body language, because especially if you're a prey animal and you're in nature, you don't want to attract attention. So how a single step in, a single step out. Eyes, the way the eyes are looking, what the eyes are doing, um, nodding the head, lifting it up, lifting it down. There's a lot of si signals, but one of the signals that they use is breath. So breath messages are important. And it's, it's kind of simple to think about. If, if we say hi to someone and we're like happy to see them, we go, Hi, you. Right? There's a long out breath. So just think like if you're saying hello to a horse, ah, long out breath, right? But if it's a sharp intake, right, that's worry and panic. So it, breaths are not that complicated, but they do have a nurturing breath that mares make to their little babies when they're first born. And it's really, they make it way deep in their throat. So it's almost, it's almost hard to hear it. Um, but when I caught on to what this breath was and I started making this breath, I had some horses that said, you're a nurturer. <laughs> I'm coming right in. Okay. So, so it sounds like you have to make like, like you've had a cold and you got, you know, you, you just don't, you can't blow your nose right now. You just got to sniff it in. So it's like a little piggy snort. So it sounds like this. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> 
And that's my equivalency because I don't have the yeah. length of throat to make it down in here. I'm not a Tuvan throat singer. I don't know how to do that. So it definitely sounds throaty for it's them. It's throaty it's for not them. not nasally. But if you have but a horse. You can get it to it, work. And you'll them. hear, if you do this to them, and they usually like it, it's sort of two sounds. So it's like, it's like, like that. Swallowing it's like you time. swallow it. And some horses will go. I know. I have to bring a microphone out because our Luna, she does it all, all the, time. the time. And I just never think like, I need to go record Luna, do the nurturing Doing breath. the nurturing so breath. one of these days. Yeah, what? yeah, that would be really, really cool. Um, yeah. Because, yes. <laughs> so I have done it too. Um, when, we, when we're putting our, our black mare, which next time we'll, we'll take a better video of her and we'll do some still shots, whatever, we'll send that to you. Yep. Because she was nervous to step on them. She was like, oh my God, I don't know what that is. And she had the opposite effect at first. So I did nurturing breath. And then she looked at me and said, oh. And then, and then she, she didn't she, get off. And she then she wouldn't get like off. 10 minutes. Oh, wow. That's really, you don't have any pictures of, the, of her that you we, can put up? They didn't come out. It just didn't. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. somebody asked, you know, what, um, uh, let, wait, wait. I just, I have to roll up and get to this question. Uh, what are some indicators that horses don't like pads? Anything to look for besides walking off? And walking off doesn't necessarily mean they don't like the pads. Right. So I'm going to go through my six Fs for why horses walk off. Flies, fright, food, friends, follow, like they're following me, or finished. So when a horse walks off the pads, you've got to kind of look at the context to see if it's flies, fright, foods, friends, follow, or finished to determine maybe they walked off because I moved. And that's a really common situation. Um, they want to start to follow you. Um, some horses don't need to stay on them very long. But I think in terms of the horses, and when we say don't like the pads or don't trust the pads, other signs are going to be ear cocking, eyes, um, a little step away, um, backing up, being full-blown panic. Um, those are the signs you really, really need to look for, and you need to be really careful if you see any of those signs to really slow down, maybe stop, put the pad away, come back to it a little later. I had one horse that was literally running backwards when I was 20 feet away from him, and I had a pad in my hand. Um, and so I took the rider off, and I spent 15 minutes just kind of working with him. And then uh, six months later, I had him in an arena with no halter, standing on four pads, completely asleep and swaying. So, um, I've, and I've also had people tell me, you know, like sometimes the horse didn't seem to like it, but then I came back a week later and he won't get off. Right. So, right. Um, and there's a, there's a phenomenon that horses do. If you start watching your horse, especially if, a, if you have a group of them, <clears throat> horses will, well, the, the, the more secure members of the herd. So there's members of the herd that are just pure followers. I call them the peanut butter and jellies. They want to be in the middle of the sandwich. They don't want to make any decisions. And then there's the horses in the herd who are like the, the bread on the sandwich. They're the leaders and the drivers, and they sort of manage everyone and take care of everything. So if you watch those horses and you see them um, go to an area and lift the tail and make a pile of poo in a very quiet way, not the, not the kind of poo that they make when they're nervous, but like a very deep, I'm making a serious pile of poo right here, and then turn around and sniff it, or then everyone else sniffs it too. What they've done is secure that spot and said, this spot is safe. Look at me, I'm so relaxed here. Ah, I can really let it all go. This is a safe spot. So you can mimic that behavior. And they'll also do that sometimes just by putting their nose on something. So they'll touch the fence post. This is a good place. This is a good tree. This tree is where we can all rest. So they, they have a signal for each other to say safety object here. So when you combine nurturing breath with the pad or you step on the pad and do nurturing breath or deep breathing, just you're saying, plus if you stand on a pad, you want to do deep breathing, just saying. So good for us too. Um, you're saying safety object here. And so then you're, what we came to uh, last week, which was really cool, is this does two things at once. Psychologically, you're saying to the horse, this is a safe spot. I'm creating a safe spot for you. And then physiologically, they're getting all this benefit from being on the pads and what it's helping the brain wire and fire and, and, and figure out and whatever injury patterns or, you know, you're a Feldenkrais uh, specialist. Yeah, we're going to talk Feldenkrais on Wednesday tomorrow um, with Catherine Wyckoff, a really good friend of mine. Her horse was the third horse we ever put on pads. So um, we're going to talk a lot about that. And, um, oh, rats. I just had a thought. Oh, um, a lot of times our intention 
with the pads, the horses are already reading. So, you know, I've had some people say, well, the pads don't work, my horse doesn't like them. But what it really comes down to is that the person had an agenda of what the horse should do. Yes. Or was to, you know, to you're going to do this. And they didn't even realize it. I mean, it's, it's so not intentional, but it's really hard for us to let go of our expectations of how our horse should behave. Right. And so, you know, so many times I have owners when I'm going to pick up a horse's leg and they're like, come on, sweetie, pick it up, pick it up. And I'm like, I don't care if she doesn't pick it up. If she doesn't pick it up, I'm learning something like maybe that's the leg she needs to stand on. Right. And yet, you know, other people have, I want my horse to be good. So it, you gotta, it's not easy, but letting go of the good and the correct and the right is really one of the key things about Surefoot is just what happens, you know, what if, would you, it's an offer. And we're going to send those videos to Wendy so you can see how we offered a shield. She can upload them and you can see how we offered the pads to each horse. And, and there is an offering and then there's, um, I like to, can you move that over a little bit? Yeah. I like to toss it down and just sort of be like, there you go. And let, if they want to paw at it or play. And what's, ha what's fascinating about this, Wendy, and I love watching this happen. I saw when I was in Germany with you, I could see this over and over and over again how they sort of paw at it like that's it. And then they go, it's <laughs> different. What the heck did I just put my foot on? And now they're like, you, could you help me? <laughs> you know, they start to pick it up and tow it. And when you can get in there and just offer it and maybe allow one foot to rest and they maybe pick it up, put it down 500 times and walk away and come back because they're just going, this is, I, I landed on Mars. I don't know how we got to Mars, but we're on Mars. And they need a minute to process and Absolutely. to be prepared. Yeah. And like, you know, I've seen this in riding lessons all the time that somebody does something that they didn't expect, say leg yield or a Canada part. And they're like, wow, that was awesome. And then the next time they try to do it, they're thinking too hard and they can't do it. Yes. And so with many horses, the first time you put their foot on a pad, they're like, they don't even notice that they don't even know it. And then they suddenly, oh, what is this? And then they're thinking about it and they're like, they can't leave their foot down for a minute, just like us. So there's a couple of interesting questions here. Um, let's see, when a horse goes into a place and smells existing poop, are they checking to see if another horse indicated safe space? Yes, <clears throat> because uh, you know horses are really good at producing pheromones. We all are, we all produce pheromones. They're good at smelling them. We don't smell anything, but they do, they smell everything. And so, yeah, they can tell like, oh, this poop came from a relaxed horse. This poop came from a stressed horse. So they're getting a read on if a stressed horse pooped in that corner and they smell it, they're like, whoa, stressful corner. And it's funny because you can see sometimes when the horse does go in that corner, corner and they, they smell it and they, they well, book it out of there. Or they go and be like, oh, wow, this is a this, really cool place to hang out. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sniff so this poop for a long time. Yeah, so that's an interesting thing. And you can't force a safety object. You can't go, this place is safe. Like yeah. you have to... <laughs> You, you have to model the behavior that you're demonstrating because they're, they're fabulous at mirroring. And so that's why, you know, paying attention to riding is so important because they're going to mirror your behavior. So let's see, there was another question here. Uh, where should you stand while horse is on pads? I think you have to explore where you're going to stand, but a lot of horses don't want your core energy on them because it's kind of like, little bit of flames coming out of your, this, it can be a driving pressure, especially some people that are very X and kind of in, intense. This can be a driving pressure. So standing with your core energy directly on the horse can make them just feel like turn and put your core energy on me. Yeah, I'm so comfortable now. <laughs> are you gonna relax now? Yeah, I, I feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that, that could be a thing to really think about the most. Um, well, yeah, I just want to add a little bit to that, that sometimes there's like this invisible umbilical cord between you and the horse when they're on the pads. And if you walk away too fast, they're yeah. like, oh, they have to leave. Yeah, they, so, follow, yeah. they follow you. Yeah, I turn a little bit and kind right. of, you know, kind of ease the, yeah. yeah. Be, be there, like they, they want two things usually at the same time. Yeah. They want you to secure the environment so they can rest. They want you to be, Fred's going down, you need to secure the environment so he's safe you need to be that safety person, but they just don't want you like blasting them with intensity. So it's, it's a balance. Um, let's see, what was there? We, uh, this one here. Oh, licking my hands. Yeah. yeah. So if a horse is licking your hands when they're on the pads, 
they're just saying that that's a huge amount of releasing. Now there's two things you can do for, um, gest for hand gestures for horses with their mouths. If you have the back of your knuckle here and not this, because this is like, this creepy. is weird. It's creepy. <laughs> so, so something more like this, they, this simulates then a muzzle and they'll do muzzle to muzzle touch. And you'll see Rocky, I do this to him. Then he touches me and then he opens his lips and it's a little licking like that. This automatically means food. Mm -hmm. so, so this invites licking, this invites contact. And you might get a, a little lick on top. But sometimes horses, what they want is contact, but, they're, but you're offering this. And so then they're saying, I guess you want me to lick. But when horses are connected to each other, they don't lick, they don't walk up and go bleh, 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 bleh. They're not like dogs or cats, bleh, bleh. They, they go and they touch each other and maybe they wiggle a little and maybe they, maybe they chew a little. So it's nice for them to have the option. So if you can get used to using the back of your hand for some contact points, even anywhere on their body, some horses that if you go to touch them like this, this is just too much, right? It's just too intense. Yeah. And you switch it to this and that's, that's all of a sudden okay. So that, that's an interesting thing. And you can watch um, primates do that. When primates are making contact, it's with the back of the hand, right? And then when they want something, they switch to the front of the hand. So that's an interesting thing to think about. Because we have these hands, we should know how to use them. Yeah. I'm going to answer this one. It's a short one. Uh, uh, it is always best to introduce horse pads when the horse is not on cross ties because that restricts them. And if something happens and they panic, it's really, really bad. So um, open space on a lead. Um, if you have a small paddock, um, again, you have to know your horse, um, but you want a fairly uh, open space, not a lot of clutter um, because you don't know how a horse is going to respond the first, first time. So you know, occasionally you'll see pictures posted on my, on my Facebook page with horses on cross ties. They might be having their foot trimmed or something like that, but it, you'll often see where they can't let their head down. Right. So, That's another thing. Yeah. No. I, I, I like to have a big open space so they can lay down and roll if they want to, or leave, or, you know, unless you can have a long enough lead rope so that they have some liberty. I liked um, when you and I were together in um, Oregon, Oregon. <laughs> And, and you had that one horse you were working with over to the side and, and every now and then he needed to just walk. Yep. That's another thing. Like sometimes they have to, like, they're getting a renewal in their body and in their sensations. And they're like, I need to walk this off. I have to feel, Integrate. you know, my left foot feels funny. Yep. Um, and I prefer a flat halter as opposed to a rope halter because the rope halters actually, there's so much weight of that rope hanging off their head. You, you don't realize the leverage that you have with that much rope. So I prefer a flat halter um, with just a regular lead shank, um, you know, depending on what you're gonna do. But, and a lot of horses, the rope halter, they overreact, like they feel it and they jerk back and you don't want them jerking back while they're trying to let down, so. Right, yeah, yeah that's a good point, yeah. All right, somebody's asked about um, Surefoot for therapy horses. Um, Sharon, have you, I mean, I have some points I can make, but I'm going to throw that to you for a sec. Yeah, I haven't tried Surefoot with therapy horses. I did work in the uh, therapy riding world for many, many, many years, and I wish I knew about them then. I, I would have loved to have brought that in because, of course, you're, to, to keep mm -hmm. therapy horses into their job, it can be challenging. And I've come up with a lot of enrichment strategies and things that really help therapy horses to um, be ready, willing, and able to, you know, and to be in the, uh, the right emotional center for deal to being in a therapy environment. And I think I would guarantee the Surefoot pads would have a really good role to play in that. Yeah. The ther so about the therapy backup is one of the things that does, that Sharon um, uses as you place your palm down on the clip of the lead rope under their chin and you scoop. It's a scooping. And then so you're asking the pole to round and then also the lumbar to round and you scoop the other hand, so this is the left Close hand. to the backup button. The backup button at the point of the shoulder. Which we're doing some herd observation, uh, a webinar coming up soon. May 6th. And there's, there's one people sent in, it was sort of a, a fun thing, people sent in all their videos. And there's this horse, and he's with his buddies, and he's coming, and the camera's freaking them out, and he touches his own backup button like oh. five times in a row, and the whole herd backs up. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's cool. Wow. Yeah, it's really cool. So sorry, go ahead and tell yours, your version. So, um, Catherine Wyckoff, again, tomorrow's guest at my webinar. Um, 
she is a therapeutic riding instructor, hippotherapist, and her horse was a therapy horse that we, uh, he was the third horse ever to be on pads. When she's at the center where she works, they'll do a spa day and they'll put out different things for the horses and they'll turn them loose. And a lot of the horses just go straight over to the surefoot pads and that's what they want for spa day. Um, we have a lot of therapy centers using surefoot now and another place where they bring the horses out and stand on the pads before they do any of their lessons. That's great. That's great. You no, know, it's a great warm up for these horses. We have people that have stopped lunging their horses and they just use surefoot pads. So it's a great warm up and it's a great way to give back to these horses that give so much. Yeah, absolutely. Someone said, uh, does, does your book or other <clears throat> info discuss further the aspects, things to keep therapy horses? Like, basically, I just sk skimmed through that. <laughs> That's a good skim. Yeah. That's that a good question. skim. So, so what, what Wendy was just saying about her, the, your contact person, the person you know who's uh, Karen, doing uh, spa uh, day, yep. basically that. Yeah, it's the same. Well, and the book does go over a lot of different enrichment things, and we do on our webinar. We have a we have a therapy horse webinar. Webinars, so any of those, which is are and the, the therapy horse webinar, really it goes over soup to nuts. So how you approach, what the quality that you bring from the moment you get the horse. So a lot of people are. Um, I did a lot of volunteer trainings, a lot of them for therapy centers and also for rescue centers, and the thing I've learned the most is that. A lot of volunteers are kind of under the gun and they're like, got to get this horse, got to get it going, da, 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 da. And so even though you may not have a lot of extra time, there's quality and enriching things you can bring into your presence and what you're doing. So it's the shift from grabbing a horse like this to touching like that. So like little shifts that have significant impact to them because it's an intrinsic message. So extrinsic is when you're, it's a learned behavior on the outside. You have to learn it and bring it in and then you know it. Intrinsic is you're born knowing it, you're born understanding it. Like when uh, they've done this research on kids who are born blind, but when you say, oh no, they do this. Oh but wow. They've never seen anyone do that, but it's intrinsic. And so there's a lot of body language signals that are intrinsic between a horse and a human. So all of this stuff that I've whittled down is like, what is the thing? If I go, I walked among some wild horses recently and I'm doing some of these signals and they're responding because it's intrinsic. So understanding what that whittled down effect is, you then are, are loaded with impactful, tiny little things. And I think that's what's cool about this, this thing. That's why I love collaborating with Wendy because yeah. it's this little thing, it's a pad. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's like intrinsic so much, to them. Yeah, it's like, it, I, it's triggering something that the horses know isn't quite the right word, but respond to. I mean, and it just, you know, I'm still so fascinated because horse after horse after horse. And like my horse, it was really funny because the other day I went to put him on pads. He's like, nope, don't want any pads today. I'm like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, then the, a couple of days later, I rode him and I rode him up and down the hill a little bit. And then the next day I went to not ride, but just, you know, uh, stretch him a little bit and stuff. And he was all over the pads and double under his left hind and starting to sway on the soft pads, you know. So on any given day that it can be, no, uh, I'm good, let's go. Or yes, please, you know, I would love that. Um, With that in mind, what I can say is sort of like hero's journey. Um, I've been really sick for a month. I just, I had a mm. double tooth infection. I had to have them pulled in the middle of coronavirus and I got a bone infection. So I've been just dealing. And um, Rocky's been recovering from this massive surgery. And so that's a huge, like they, you know, huge, huge, huge gut surgery. And so we put him on those pads and we had started just, just starting to ride him a little bit, five minutes here, five minutes there. He, he was look he's into it he loves it he loves to go out we have a trail um and then i couldn't do it anymore because i, I was so sick so she started right after the pad she started riding him just going around the trail just 15 minutes in our woods and then i got on him for the first time yesterday day before a couple days ago, couple days ago yes and i couldn't believe the change in his body i could not believe the change i was like and he's like yeah i feel great now <laughs> so i so that's another thing too it's like I think that he's had a lot of treatments. He's had the Beamer. He's had really great tooth floating. He's had um, barefoot trimming. He's had a lot of, you know, Masterson method. He's had a lot, a lot of things. And I think everything all together is great. But, I, but the biggest change I can tell sitting on him is that since the pads, something changed. And it, like he was back to like where he used to be. It was really incredible. So, um, 
Let's see, there was a question here. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about um, where they can get your books and stuff. How often should you use the pads? And that's so individual. Like some horses really want to stand on pads every day. Some horses like my horse, not today, but yes, tomorrow. Um, so it's just nice to have them nearby and offer and they'll tell you if they want them. Um, and then somebody's asked about using them for people. Absolutely. I mean, we have some really crazy stories about people standing on surefoot pads and having change. Um, one of my favorite ones is I was in New Zealand and this woman had had a head trauma from coming off her horse two weeks before I got there. And I just put her on the half physio pad and within seconds her headache went away and then she slept super deep twice that day and was so much better. Um, Robin Hood took a half physio pad to South Africa and this person who had a huge kyphosis stood on the pad and straightened right up. I mean, wow. Like, yeah. Like, so, um, you know, we never quite know what's going to happen. Um, people don't have the same kind of licking and chewing and, and dozing off that horses have, but they definitely start to sway and you feel people explore their balance. And so, you know, it's always a great idea to stand on some pads while your horse is standing on pads. <laughs> well, I've been standing on the, the physio pad because since my teeth, because oh, yeah. I'm all like wonky and I'll stand on it for a moment. And I always have, I, I'm pretty aware of my my body because I, I talk with it all the time so when I get on the pads I'm super aware of like whoa <laughs> you know? it's like the whole room but it's an internal sensation not an external one and it's like you arrive at this moment where you just kind of go and you're like oh there I am you know it's like it's like my arm was was flopping over doing that oh it's back now you know so it's <laughs> it's a really cool sensation yeah, that physio pad, um, that's the one I used when I had the hip surgery two years ago and I couldn't stand on my left leg until I stood on that pad. It's, it's crazy. I mean, I'm even amazed. Yeah. I've been out here. Um, so where somebody's asked where they can get your book. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're the same person sometimes. Um, that's what happens when you live with someone, right? Yeah, we have our website, SharonWilsey.com. So we do offer webinars and online trainings and also our books. Uh, there's two books, Horse Feet, Horse, Horses in Translation. And we do have a DVD called First Conversations. Those items are available on the website. You could go to the competitor, the massive Amazon as well, but uh, support local <laughs> business. And, uh, uh, you know. and but wouldn't and, uh, you want to have their book? Of course. Well, yeah, actually, there you go. We these, do these have days, Trafalgar send. Free. We're having Trafalgar yeah. because of the whole social distancing. And, oh. you know, and, and we did do, um, it's interesting when you do like, yeah, come and buy our stuff through us. You become like, you go into the post office five times a day and, you know, it's very yeah. time consuming. <laughs> Believe me. You being your own shipping agent. And then also Sharon does have a third book coming out called Horse Training in Translation. And that should be available this fall. So we just passed that into Trafalgar last week. Last week. So. Oh, that's got to feel good. Yeah. yeah. It's like getting my teeth pulled. Yeah. So, <laughs> all of it. It was, it's been an amazing. I know the feeling because, uh, yeah, I know, I'm right, right with you. Yeah, you've got some fantastic books as well. Yep. Um, all my Surefoot products can be found at murdochmethod.com. Um, just go to the shop. And um, if you use the code, uh, I, I have Land Rover, L-R-K-3-D-E, L-R-K-3-D-E, and I'll put it in the chat, L-R-K-3-D-E. You will get 10% off any purchases between now and Friday. Um, we were supposed to be at the Land Rover three-day event in Lexington, Kentucky, and that was, of course, canceled. So we just decided to do a 10% discount code, um, good for any of the Surefoot products on my website, murdochmethod.com backslash shop. Um, and we will be shortly launching the Surefoot Equine website. So um, you can register your products at Murdoch, Ma Murdoch Method right now, but soon, I'm hoping Friday, I just talked to my web guy again today, um, we'll be launching the Surefoot Equine website, which I am really, really excited about. So looking forward. That's awesome. Yay, that's congrats. Really awesome. That's like, you know, that's like producing a book, making yeah. a website. <laughs> it's a involved <clears throat> Yeah, these that's things, awesome. they take time. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, my, book, my books are all Kindle friendly, uh, but if they're, if Horse Speak is Horsepeak. a little challenging because it has 216 photos in it. And so then all the photos are actually at the end. So oh, that, we moved them again? Yeah, it's just how Kindle did it. That's how they did it. They, were, they, they weren't at the end when I got my Kindle, oh, but really? maybe they changed it. Did they change but it? But they're not in association with the text. Yeah, yeah that's the thing, because it's know. supposed to be the text goes with the picture. <laughs> Right. No, no, don't do that on Kindle. Um, you know, so, photo, yeah. 
photo heavy books are, and that's the same with my books is that you have to really pay attention because the photo is not really in the right place. Yeah. Well, my second book has no photos in it. It's, it's a collection of stories, real life stories with, with utilizing horse speak out in the world with many different situations. And so that's easy because you can just read it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's just an unfortunate thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you're going to send me those videos so I can splice yeah. in the webinar. Awesome. And I'm just going to pick one little bone. Um, I can see that you did not watch the DVD. I know that because your hand was down by the hoof. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh. No, I don't have the DVD. It came with your pack. Oh, it came with the, that's right. Well, that, this, that, that recording was before we got your gift. That's right. And so then we haven't, uh, and those are not even our pads. Right. Okay, all right, then I, so, I'll, yeah, yes. Yeah. So we so, haven't done the official, it was just like, yeah. our we're, friend we're just brought him over yeah. and be like, okay, <laughs> we saw Wendy do this thing, let's do it. <laughs> so it's just really important to keep your hands away from the hoof because especially if a horse is on multiple, you know, on more than one pad, if he loses his balance a little, he could step on your hand. It's a right, safe yeah. thing. And also that you're bending over that far. Um, you know, if something happens and he startles, you're in a more vulnerable position. So using your foot to position the pad. But okay, I'm going to let you guys slide on that today. And all right, <laughs> we also do video chats and uh, video sessions as well. With so somebody, I did, somebody asked ask about that. So. Yeah. Check on our website. We do have um, some revamps to our website, so that is definitely visible. So let us know, or you can write us an email at sharonwilsey at gmail.com. Yep. So all these webinars are on my YouTube channel, Surefoot Equine. Please go there and check them all out. Um, they're all just uh, in a, they're even in a playlist called webinars. Um, Sharon, as always, it is such a blast to have you. And so I think the next time, because there has to be a next time now, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> I think what we'll do is you send me the videos ahead of time, either with yeah. the transfer or whatever, and then I can play them just because I have a faster internet. And yeah, you know, it, know. yeah, that's right. And we'll we'll watch the DVD and we'll uh, we'll do another <laughs> another trick. Well, I want to catch some of the other horses on the pads because they had really fascinating responses as well, and just it didn't come out. The thing didn't come out. So we'll redo it and we'll. Kick yeah, no worries. And I'd love to see that mayor doing flying changes if you can keep your cell phone handy. And it's yeah. funny because we're supposed to have fast internet too. So I don't know why our internet is being a little... Everyone's uh, on it. Video is, yeah, video is tricky. Um, and so sometimes it has to load first before you can actually play it. Um, but, you know, the beauty of editing is that I can put it in. Yeah. Super. Yeah. All right, Wendy. Well, thank you so much for having us. And we yeah. look forward to uh, connecting. Yeah, the hour flies by, doesn't it? It does. It does. <laughs> like, it totally does. Yeah. So glad that you're better and that I, I go to the dentist tomorrow. So <laughs> wish me luck. Oh, my oh. gosh. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for another yeah. webinar with Sharon Wilsey. Um, do check out her books, videos, and her website. She's got some great webinar material. You guys got it like an online class, right? We do, yeah. we do. We, we actually are starting a, um, a school. It's already filled this year. So that's, okay. that was our big, our big push this year. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a lot of online support. And now that I'm not traveling, I'm doing um, FaceTime with people and that's been working out fantastic. So yeah. Yep. Um, and um, okay, I'll answer this question. I'll type this answer. Um, all right, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank Take you. Take care y'all. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Tomorrow, 8 o'clock, Catherine Wyckoff. It's going to be a great meeting. <laughs>